Okay, um, so my poem today is actually like a prose poetry piece that I did, um, a while ago. Uh, it was actually used in a movie, um, my friend Katie Michaels made a short film and used this as like narration in the background, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, she's really talented. Anyway, so I'm going to read this to you guys, um, I don't know if I like it anymore, but uh, I'm kind of having a, a rough day and I'm not in the mood to really write another poem right now, so I'll read this. Meditation 16 floors above 60th. 16 floors closer to the stars, to airplanes, to flying into space without gravity, without oxygen. A whole 16 floors closer to being just another group of molecules floating through space. And I can feel the drag even now, the pull to float peacefully to the ground, to bounce back and forth between this world and the next, nothing more than dust and liquid. But being me, I wonder, if, I'll, if I allow myself to fall, will I forget how to fly? Me, a raven, black feathers, an ugly croaking voice. Me, a brilliant menace among snows and swans and snowy cranes. Would I forget to be loathsome? Would I forget to be me? The sad thing is, I always write about swans. I, I admire everything about them, the way they love, the way they look. Sometimes I catch myself lacquering my black feathers and white out, like pay, playing dress up in my mother's pearls. The swans left the pond alone today, Central Park filled with bagpipes and violins and crickets and ducks and people. So much sound, there was no room for their sophisticated silence. The first breeze of winter tangles me, all burrs in my knees and elbows. I swore the last time I checked it was spring. A wind has blow the, blown the rain away and blown the sky away and all the leaves away, and the trees stand. I think I too have known autumn too long, and it's too late to fly south now from my window to greet the people milling about, too late to fly anywhere. So I climb into my bed and hibernate, and I can't decide if I'm covered in blankets because I'm cold or because I can't stand to look at the stains on my feathers anymore. My feathers are stained black with raven, colored in, covered in dirt from my awkward, unbending, too bending limbs which tumble me into ink puddles. I croak like I have something important to say. And it's the fact that wherever you are in New York, you're a voyeur. People pass on the street moving serpentinely and radically, making pretty shapes with their hands and their lips. It's impossible not to watch the lovers kiss, the flowers bloom, the statues erode. I find myself catching falling children I've never met. I find myself singing along to songs that passing tourists hum, petting others' pets. And then I'm home and alone, and when the strains of Frank Sinatra sound, all I hear is a swan song, a dying breath. It's the fact that the city is too bright, the woods are too dark, everything little looks big in a mist. It's the way that I've known since I was born, we all have, that one way or another, everyone dies alone. It's how I put things off until I forget I have to do them. It's when I asked my brother what he was reading, and he said spark notes. It's finding the meaning of life and hiding it under my mattress. It's being unattainable, when all I want is someone to tuck me into bed at night. I can hear them speak, a growling descant of young voices in the next room, separated only by a thin wall. And I wonder when my youth left me, as barren and cold as darkest space. I wonder, which was the exact moment that I first felt the pain of elderly joints? When did I first feel the tough, leathery restraints of time? Their walls are covered in rock stars. Mine have old cameos, silhouettes of the long departed, and a mirror. Every morning, I glance between the battered old frames and compare my feathers to shadows. <laughs>